going back a few years there, I was I um I um I encountered an assault by a hammer, which took out a fair percentage of my skull from there right down to the back of there. So I had no that's titanium there now. That's titanium there now. Which resulted in um I've been mean dead three times. They got me down to Flinders Medical by helicopter and then um, the team of neurosurgeons there, they gave me a scorecard of five of making it through the night. I had blood coming out of my eyes, my ears, my nose and all that, that kind of thing. And then um, I was leaking like a boat. Anyway, um, so they had me in ICU, life support systems and all that there and I was hooked up there for a while with a didgeridoo stuck down my throat to breathe. And, I um so um they called my family in, this team of neurosurgeons. So they wanted um enough signatures of my family, not only my testimony to see it for everybody there to think about if they do this to any of them up there too. They wanted enough signatures so they can terminate my life support. Because they said there was no more hope for me, they couldn't do nothing for me. So I'm a figment of your imagination standing here. <laughs> but before I come to the Lord there, before I come to the Lord there, man, oh, I was, oh, I was a little angry little black duck, I can tell you. I'm from a stolen generation, so I had a chip on my shoulder. I, um, yeah, there's none of Jerry Elder that live down, down here. He to see me at the bar, and they come in, they see me in the bar, and they take off. <laughs> That's how I, none of you guys would have wanted to know me before then. But um, that's what the Lord's done there, he's coming to me, smack me right here, you know, he's, he's taken away that pain, he's released me from all that anger and emptiness, and um, I mean, my ex-wife, she left, she left me through all this there too, you know, it got to do it, I guess. So she sat and poured a gas and she got herself hooked up with another Aboriginal bloke there and I, I caught wind of it. Now the old me, the normal me, would have been right in my patchy helicopter. I'd have unloaded an arsenal here, man, on the her and that, that tribe there, man. Yeah. So, um, I, um, it's coming up to Christmas there and, um, the Lord there, um, Talk told me there to go up there, so I went up there and I thought, oh, here we go. He said, no, hold her up. Hold her up and hold him up. And I thought, mm, and this ain't right. This will be blood here, something <laughs> here. But, no, nah, but um, I am, um, I am. Um, so I went up there, holding her up, holding up my son, and I, I was praying for her. And I said, Lord, I pray for Tanya there. And I sort of hold, I hold up her new partner. I said, Lord, let them both find what they're looking for. Let them both find the love that they need. And when I've done that, <laughs> nothing. Jealousy, rejection, everything, nothing, you know. I go to Port Augusta. When I go up there, I stop with them. I go up there in the gutter. In the gutter, butter. <laughs> I go up there in the Bronx of Port Augusta I come from. I go up there and stop at their place there. And the rest of the monkeys can't get over it. Where are you stopping, man? I said, Tanya, I said, oh no, nah, what you do, what you do to Artie and her boyfriend? I said, nothing, he's there, he's there, he's right, he's cool with my brother. <laughs> I even cleaned up his overdraft <laughs> in his bank account. That's what the Lord's done with me, man, that's how he changed me, mate. And that's, okay, that's a spin around, man, ain't <laughs> What a ripper, eh? I tell you, he's such a dude. When he first came, he, had, he used to wear a helmet and there was a hole in his skull that big. A hole in his skull. He, he can hardly speak because it, it has affected his speech. So that's a miracle he's actually talking to you. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, praise God. <laughs>